at this place called Umbra Penumbra, which was a cool place. Yeah. And uh, somebody told me about it. And so I went there, and Kevin had a poetry reading. And after the poetry reading, there were a bunch of people reading. And I said, hey, man, you know, my name's Greg Tozy, and uh, I'd like to read some poetry. Would that be cool? And Kevin is uh, the two things I think that people should be, which are um, he's really weird, and he's a consummate professional, right? So uh, he said, uh, send me some stuff, you know? So I sent it to him. I didn't hear from him for about six or eight weeks. And I thought, well, fuck it, he's not gonna, I'm not gonna read, right? He calls me up at home, and one night he goes, uh, tells me, this is Kevin Sample, and I said, yeah. And he says, I got your stories, and I said, yeah. He says, send me all your stories, send him 30 stories. And, and I said, so, can I read your thing? You don't rip a number. He says, I don't give a fuck if you read it, my thing. And I thought, gee, what an asshole this guy is. And he says, I want to publish a book of your stuff. And I said, oh. So it was like one of those fortunately, unfortunately stories. So Kevin talked me into publishing this thing, Dal Head Eater. And uh, I'll read something from that. If I can find it. And my wife said, well, read, this is Portland, uh, Portland, read the one about, you know, fucking and tooth decay. But that one is longer, so I'm going to read a shorter one, if I can find it. Because one story in here is 55 pages long. That's my magnum opus. This is called Kill Me a Grape. I met Anya on Macau in 87, the year of the six million. One of those German girls who can pull the engine on your Mercedes while making a strudel with her eyelids. There we were, stuck on Schweitzer's compound with nothing to eat, and she devised a brilliant plan to get us mangoes and fermented coconut milk from the local painted savages by setting up a photographic portrait studio and a little clearing she'd hacked out of the corruption of the jungle with my pen knife. But we don't even have a camera or film or a dark room or any of that shit, I offered. She gave me a look that said, what did go wrong with the Third Reich anyway? Look, she said, getting to work, let me handle the details. You just go out and line up some suckers. Isn't high school graduation in another two weeks? Convincing the locals that I wasn't bullshitting them took some doing, including my having to smoke a green root they assiduously gathered from under the granite boulders atop nearby Mount Surtees. I hallucinated like a bastard for 36 hours, sweated 10 or 12 gallons of my essence into a bowl for them to bathe in, all in one long sleepless night, and had a bowel movement that looked like Satan wearing a hopper. <laughs> By the time I got back with the contracts, she'd set up a photo parlor that wouldn't have looked out of place in Cabaret-era Berlin. The soul catcher consisted of a sardine can fitted with a series of lenses she'd taken from the bifocals of earlier explorers the natives had eaten in the halcyon days when they did that sort of thing. The film she'd made from a process of parboiling papaya skins and impregnating them with silver particles she'd shaved with the penknife again from her ankle bracelet. The enlarger was a hollowed out gourd fitted in the ceiling of the dark room, daylight emitted through a hole knocked in one end, and so forth. By the time we photographed the graduating class, two weddings and a human sacrifice, we went for our keisters and tropical fruits and aboriginal joy juice. I thought it was a pretty sweet setup and had even thought of asking her to build a smelting plant so we could make munitions for being so teutonic and everything that we might overthrow some of the neighboring islands and start having some real fun. Naturally, that was about the time she turned. One morning, she cut off her ears and painted herself gold. Don't bother me with your tombstone eyes, she says. I'm going down to the bottom of the lake to hang with Neptune for a while. She was dead by noon.